So this past Friday, just a couple of days ago, Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury finally released on the Nintendo Switch, making it the first first-party Nintendo game on the Switch in 2021. Now I know over the past couple of weeks, we've talked about this game on this channel plenty of times. I feel like we've talked about it to death, and don't worry, this video isn't really about that game, but it's more about the larger conversation about what else we might expect from Nintendo specifically on the Switch in 2021, and when we might finally start to hear about it. Really, the nature of the whole conversation is just based on the fact that we don't know anything else about what Nintendo themselves is developing and releasing on the Switch for the rest of this year. Literally, the first thing they released is just a port of a last-gen game. Granted, it's got some pretty cool new content in Bowser's Fury, which is really great to see, and by all accounts, it is very good, although also very short, which is why most of you know I've decided to hold off a couple of weeks before I decide if I'm gonna actually buy it or not, because I have already completed and still own 3D World on the Wii U. But now that we've gotten this one game out of the way, all eyes start to look at the rest of the year, which is most of the year, and what Nintendo might be doing because so much about 2021 is still a mystery, even though many of us expect 2021 to turn out to be an incredibly strong year for the Switch. Don't forget before we dive too much deeper into this topic that I am always trying to grow the channel here. I upload several videos every single week talking about Nintendo and Metroid and all other things gaming. So as you watch this video, if you seem to like what I'm doing and what you see, then hopefully you will consider subscribing to the channel and help me cross a couple more milestones very soon. So even though Mario 3D World is going to be a little bit controversial for being a last-gen Wii U port and for Bowser's Fury maybe being shorter than a lot of us were hoping for, it's still a big deal. It was still a very hotly anticipated release, and I think that most of us know this game is going to sell like crazy. My personal prediction is 10 million or more. I really think think this game will sell that much. And even though it's low on my Mario list, I do think it's a very good game that most people are going to love, especially everyone who's playing it for the first time, which, let's be honest, most people are playing it for the first time on the Switch. And so I know it's going to make people very happy and satisfied and feel like a brand new fresh experience, which is great for those people. I'm very jealous of you, but at the same time, I'm not, because I'm very happy and proud to say that I purchased and played this game, along with all of the other Wii U games, day and date when they released on the Wii U. Either way, it's still cool that so many people are finally experiencing it for the first time. But now we're in the aftermath of Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. We're finally in the following week, the game is out, it's done, everyone's playing it, everyone's already beaten Bowser's Fury, people are having fun with it. And so what else is Nintendo going to do? Like I said earlier, most of us expected 2021 to turn out to be a really great year because 2020, obviously because of the pandemic, turned out to be a very, very slow year. So most of us have been believing that a lot of their biggest and best stuff for 2020 has been pushed into 2021, which would also mean they're coming out alongside of the other games that might have already been planned for 2021. So the prospect is very exciting, and luckily, quarter one for the Switch is pretty strong. I discussed this on a video many, many weeks ago as well. The fact that 3D World plus Bowser's Fury is coming out, but there's also Bravely Default 2, a huge title for JRPG fans, and then Monster Hunter Rise, which is going to be a an absolutely mammoth release. Something I am excited for. I am personally scheduling PTO off of, off of work, my job, to be able to play this for a couple of days because I'm so excited. It is going to be huge in Japan. It is going to be huge around the world. There's also Ghosts and Goblins Resurrection coming out in a couple of weeks, which is a game I'm very excited for. And then, of course, your other typical smattering of some, maybe some other ports or some indie games. And so all in all, quarter one is a pretty strong start to what could hopefully be a much better year. But to be fair, we don't know what these other games are going to be. The only real first party Nintendo game that we know is being made that has a chance, a real chance, I should say, at coming out this year, we all know it, we've discussed it, I've talked about it, it's Zelda Breath of the Wild 2. There is a great chance that this game is supposed to be coming out this year. In fact, when it was first revealed at E3 in 2019, I already set a target date for 2021. I was already thinking it was this year. Many people thought the game was going to come out last year, and maybe that was a plan and the pandemic delayed it. We might not ever know the answer to that, but whatever circumstances happened, it didn't come out last year. So now here we are in 2021, and I personally still believe that this game has a great shot at coming out this year. 
And, like most of us, I also think it's probably going to be their big holiday title, so coming out in October or probably November. But when it comes to Zelda this year, it doesn't stop at Breath of the Wild 2, because the other big Zelda conversation happening right now is the 35th anniversary celebration. This year is the 35th anniversary of The Legend of Zelda. Kind of a big deal if you're a gamer, you know, if you've been gaming for the last several decades. Zelda is kind of a big deal, and so we're all very excited to see if Nintendo is actually going to release some new games or some collections to celebrate this anniversary. They just did it many months ago with Mario in the 35th anniversary year last year, and they released so many new products, and they gave us a Mario-themed Nintendo Direct, and they released the Mario 3D All-Stars Collection, which is an awesome collection of three of the best Mario games ever made in HD on the Switch for 60 bucks. Some people were unhappy with it for a variety of reasons, which I understand, but I really didn't care about most of those problems. I think it's really great. I'm very happy to own a copy of it. And it should be noted that this week is specifically the actual anniversary week of the original Legend of Zelda. Many people have been talking about this week being the time Nintendo might give us a surprise Legend of Zelda Nintendo Direct, and they're going to give us all sorts of new Zelda games, and we're going to get a collection of XYZ. And, um, I mean, it's right now only Tuesday, the day that you're watching this, so anything is possible. Personally, I don't expect it to be this week, but I do think this year, the actual year anniversary of The Legend of Zelda, there is a good shot, actually, that Nintendo might actually reveal something or have some sort of celebration or a presentation and maybe release a collection of games. And, you know, a lot of us have talked to death about what we think Nintendo would actually release for Zelda this year. Um, a collection of things like The Wind Waker and Twilight Princess and Skyward Sword, you know? I actually think Skyward Sword, this may be divisive for some people, and a lot of you may disagree with me on this, but I'm just speaking for myself here. I kind of think Skyward Sword, if they did enough of the right tweaks to that game, I kind of think that they could get away with releasing that as its own game, even at a full price, 60 bucks, and obviously we would maybe prefer to pay something closer to 40, but I think Nintendo could get away with and would choose to release it for the full $60. And I don't know, Skyward Sword is in such a unique situation. It's been trapped on the Wii ever since it released. I personally adore the game. I think the Joy-Cons could be made to use to emulate the motion controls. And I think there probably is a way to make that game work without motion controls. I know many people may disagree, but I do think it might be possible. And so maybe we get a Skyward Sword either in a collection with Twilight Princess and Wind Waker or as its own game. What about re-releasing remakes or remasters or collections of some of the 2D games? Uh, most notably like the Minish Cap or the Oracle games or Phantom Hourglass has been in the news. All of these things, these are the kinds of things Nintendo might do this year. They might not, but personally, I believe we will probably hear from Zelda this year. Sticking with the anniversary conversation, I would be very foolish to skip over the Metroid situation. Obviously, I'm a Metroid-focused channel. I think a lot of you guys come to me or even have subscribed to me because of all my Metroid content, which I'm very proud of. And it's also the 35th anniversary of Metroid. Gee, what a coincidence. Just like with Zelda, it's also Metroid's anniversary. And since they did it with Mario, and since a lot of us believe they would do it with Zelda, I also think they would do it with Metroid. And I know that it's harder to predict that because a lot of us feel, and I'm included here, that Nintendo hasn't done a good job of acknowledging Metroid or releasing proper games and products around the series. Obviously, there was a huge shift and change with Samus Returns on the 3DS in 2017, which makes me happy because that game is absolutely fan-freaking-tastic. And the fact that they even announced Metroid Prime 4 is being made is also a huge deal. But since then, three years ago, over three years ago, we have seen nothing when it comes to Metroid. And knowing that they're making Metroid Prime 4 makes us wonder what else they might do. Are they going to release a trailer or something this year? I personally think so. But what about new games? Would they dare have a Metroid-themed Nintendo Direct? Could you guys imagine a Metroid Direct? I would just die with happiness, oh my god. And so, are we going to see the Prime Trilogy? Are we going to see a brand new 2D game? Are we going to see a combination of, the, of all of this? Are we going to see a Samus Returns port? A remake of Fusion or Super Metroid? All of these things have also been listed on the table. And all I'll say is, I do expect Metroid to show up in some fashion this year. I also expected it last year, which didn't happen, but I think there's a chance the pandemic changed plans there. So I really want to believe that this year is the year we're probably going to see the Prime Trilogy because of the Anniversary Collection. 
And I really think a trailer for Metroid Prime 4, some kind of gameplay or tease for that game is coming this year. Now outside of the Zelda and the Metroid stuff, the only other big games we really know about are really third-party games. Bayonetta 3 and No More Heroes 3 jump to mind as really the biggest third-party games that we know to be confirmed, outside of the ones that are already releasing in quarter one, right? Like Monster Hunter and Bradley Default. We're still waiting on an official release date for No More Heroes 3. We're still waiting on freaking anything for Bayonetta 3. But again, those are third-party games. I know that they're probably gonna release this year, but what about Nintendo? What else would they do for this year? Well, one of the games that's been on my radar for a long time, and I know we're all getting sick of talking about and waiting for this game, but I still believe it's being made. I still believe there's a plan to release this game at some point, and it's Pikmin 4. The main reason I bring up Pikmin 4 is, just like I said, I do believe the game is still being made, but also, I think there's a great chance that it's going to release this year. Going into 2020, as foolish as it sounds now, I thought it was going to be the year of Pikmin, man. I thought a Pikmin 3 port was possible, which of course ended up actually happening in October. And I also thought it was going to be used to help announce Pikmin 4 to also release in 2020. Now, again, I hate to keep relying on the pandemic, but it's kind of all we can do when we look back at 2020. And I still kind of believe Pikmin 4 might have been a plan for last year. And so if the pandemic shifted it, then I think there's a great chance it's coming out this year. And I know that there's been discussions about Pikmin 4 was announced, you know, barely announced. It was discussed by Miyamoto in 2015, and then it went silent, and then Hey Pikmin came out a couple of years later, and so a lot of us thought Hey Pikmin was actually the game he was talking about. But Miyamoto himself confirmed, just weeks before Hey Pikmin released, that Pikmin 4 is basically a different game, and that Hey Pikmin is not that game. Which is very exciting, because that means they should still be making this game, so what the heck is going on? Hopefully, that's a game that could show up this year in 2021. What about a new Mario game? Is it time for a new Mario game, some sort of sequel to Odyssey, or a successor, basically just the follow-up title, whatever that turns out to be? And um, yeah, you know, I, I have a pretty open mind when it comes to the next Mario game. I think between this year and the next couple of years, we could see it. Obviously, we all know it's being made. Nintendo has plans and they're developing the current new Mario game that is an actual successor or sequel to Odyssey. Whether it's an Odyssey 2, whether it's a totally different game, the new 3D Mario game, we all know Nintendo's making it. And I think that game has a chance of coming out in 2024 or even 2021 this year. I mean, really, I don't know. The sky's the limit when it comes to the release of that game. But because I think there's a chance it could actually be a surprise title for this year, it's worth bringing up. I mean, Think about it, it could actually line up perfectly with Zelda. Breath of the Wild 2017, Breath of the Wild 2 2021, Mario Odyssey 2017, Mario sequel game 2021. I mean, it would be really cool if Nintendo's overall plan was to actually release these two games and franchises in tandem on the Nintendo Switch. It, it might sound like a, like a wishful thinking and just like the perfect dream scenario, and normally with Nintendo, I would say we shouldn't get our hopes up, but for some reason, this one feels really possible to me, so I don't know, I'm not putting money on this, but I think there's a chance a Mario game could show up or get announced for this year. It's worth noting that there are two studios that we know have been working on some other mysterious game we haven't heard of. One is Retro Studios, and I know with Retro, I mean, who know? You can't predict those guys. You can't even talk about what they're making. We know that they're working on Metroid Prime 4. Plenty of discussions about the game they were making. Is that game canceled? Is that game still being worked on? No one really knows, but I think there's a chance it could come out this year. And then the other one is Monolith Studios, because Monolith, who wrapped up with Xenoblade Chronicles 2, and then Torn of the Golden Country, and then the Definitive Edition remaster last year, we also know Monolith has been working on some other new game and they've had job postings and job listings and, you know, we don't know what that is. Is it yet another Xenoblade game? Is it another new IP? Are they maybe working on another Nintendo franchise? Because Nintendo has tapped Monolith to work on some things. They even helped with Breath of the Wild, for example. If they're making a new game, would it be another open world style of game like a Xenoblade or a Breath of the Wild? Or is it something brand new? Is it an RPG? Is it some other franchise, like I said? I mean, who knows? But it's exciting to know they're making something and, you know, 
Just like a lot of these things I'm talking about today, I think there's a chance that we may be here from Monolith Soft or even Retro Studios, as wild as that sounds, sometime this year. And I think beyond that, then we start to look at the wildcard franchises. And to me, there's a couple of main wildcard franchises. One is F-Zero, the other one is Star Fox. Uh, these are franchises that I think a lot of people maybe fear are dead within Nintendo, that Nintendo is just done with them. They're never gonna make a new game in these franchises. They're just done. And um, I understand that cynical uh, outlook, and obviously, I mean, maybe that's true, but it doesn't feel true to me, man. I think that both F-Zero and Star Fox have a good shot at coming out. With F-Zero, it's tricky because F-Zero really hasn't gone through the the controversy, if you want to say, when it comes to their video game releases, because pretty much every F-Zero game that's ever been made has been well received, at least critically and by the fans, right? Sure, they maybe haven't sold as well as we want, but they are generally considered to be good games. Fans have never really gotten upset or turned their back on that franchise and started yelling at Nintendo about how much they're screwing up F-Zero. I mean, those games are considered to be very good, so that franchise has a lot of goodwill with the fans, and so it's in a perfect position to make a strong comeback and be very well received. Star Fox, similar but also different scenario, because I love Star Fox. I personally haven't played a Star Fox game I don't like. I think even their most controversial games are good, like Star Fox Command or Star Fox Adventures. I actually love Star Fox Adventures. And even, yes, Star Fox Zero, the last game on the Wii U in 2016 that made a lot of people unhappy and some people hate that game because the controls were awkward. I like even that game. And so, could Star Fox come back? Well, it's obviously on more of a shaky ground than F-Zero because, like I said, there have been games that people haven't liked and they've yelled at Nintendo about how much they're screwing up that franchise. That has happened, including its most recent release. But I don't think that franchise is dead either, and man, a Star Fox game on the Nintendo Switch makes so much sense to me, you guys. It gets me crazy excited. Maybe they would do like a port, like a, another Wii U port, like a Star Fox Zero Definitive Edition and fix the controls, or who knows what they would do there. Um, maybe they do something like that, but I would love to instead see a brand new game. Same with F-Zero, same with Star Fox, bring on a new game. But just because I want a new F-Zero and a new Star Fox, just like I know a lot of you guys do, does that mean we're gonna see these games in 2021? I don't know. Um, I think there's a chance we get some sort of wild card franchise announced this year, and you could even argue that a Pikmin 4 might even also fall in that same category. But with, you know, Pikmin 3 being a successful game and then even Pikmin 3 Deluxe coming out last year, Nintendo is clearly acknowledging and paying attention to it. So I feel like Pikmin 4 just, just feels like a more realistic uh, game to maybe see this year. Something like a Star Fox or an F-Zero or, you know, other weird games like, uh, no, I shouldn't say weird, but more obscure or out there titles. Uh, like even like, I don't know, like a new Kirby or a new Kid Icarus. Um, stuff like that, a Star Tropics, a new Earthbound, people want these kinds of things to show up again. Um, any one of these things that I've talked about here today are possible. The, it's hard because this whole conversation is just like, let's talk about Nintendo franchises that we want. And of course, we pretty much want all of them. You know, a new Mario Kart could even be in the cards for this year, who knows. Um, but I did want to just kind of rattle through some of these and what seems the most likely this year, what seems not so likely. I think the big focus for most of us right now are the anniversaries. The Zelda anniversary, the Metroid anniversary, we want a Metroid Prime trilogy, we want a Zelda collection. There's a chance that we see these things happen this year. I'm also pretty hopeful for a new 2D Metroid game to release, and so when it comes to first party Nintendo stuff this year, that's kind of where we are right now. It's it's. I mean, you know, there's a lot of possibilities for Nintendo to surprise us and make us very happy and also make a ton of money in the process. Also, new IPs are on the table. I mean, and maybe even a Splatoon 3. God, the longer I think, the more I just start rattling stuff off. I got to cut myself off from just talking about franchises. Um, we'll have to just see what Nintendo's plans are for this year. So anyway, these are my thoughts and this is my conversation about the topic at hand. 3D World Plus Bowser's Fury is out. Nintendo's got a first party title on the Switch in 2021. And that's great and exciting and we should all be enjoying it. But what comes next? Let's look forward to what comes next. Are we getting a Nintendo Direct sometime soon? 
I think so. Are they going to show up for the E3 thing that's happening? Are they, are they showing us Zelda this week? Are they giving us Metroid Prime Trilogy this year? All these things, man. So talk about my thoughts and my conversation. And then, of course, what you expect for Nintendo first party this year. And with that, this video is a wrap. Of course, don't forget here at the end of the video, I hope that you consider subscribing to the channel. I'm making several videos a week. So with that, this video is a wrap. Thanks, of course, as always, for tuning in, guys. This is Rob of World of Review, and I'll catch you next time on another video.